Good morning. Welcome to the celebration of the Feast of Pentecost. We get to change our season. We get to change uh, the, the, the colors and the joy, and we get to celebrate the work of the Holy Spirit in and through Holy Cross. Uh, we will follow the bul bulletin for our liturgy as it is laid out on page 151. Um, I have a couple of announcements. Uh, we have a school work day coming up, and that will be Saturday, June 10th at 9 o'clock, and it says there will be donuts, so just to entice you a little bit. <laughs> um, next Sunday, we are celebrating the Feast of Holy Trinity, and so we have Pentecost and Trinity, and during the uh, celebration of Holy Trinity, we will also have our hymn sing in between the services to usher in the new season, so we get to hear all the Pentecost uh, hymns that we want to hear. Uh, also, please read your bulletin extension that has all the things that are happening uh, here at Holy Cross Church and School. But on the front uh, page, I wanted to bring your attention. Uh, Tuesday evening, the Voters Assembly extended a call to Philip Magnus to be the director of parish music here at Holy Cross. So we uh, did that through the Voters Assembly. And I ask you to pray for him, his family, and the congregation he is currently serving. Let us begin with our opening hymn. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost. Amen. If we say we have no sin, we deceive ourselves, and the truth is not in us. Let us then confess our sins to God, our Father. 
most merciful God. Dearly beloved, I have good news. Almighty God in his mercy has given his son to die for you and for his sake forgives you all your sins. As a called and ordained servant of Christ and by his authority, I therefore forgive you all your sins in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost. Spirit, fill the hearts of the faithful and kindle in them the fire of your love. Alleluia. In peace, let us pray to the Lord. For the peace from above and for our salvation, let us pray to the Lord. For the peace of the whole world, for the well-being of the church of God, and for the unity of all, let us pray to the Lord. For this holy house, and for all who offer here their worship and praise, let us pray to the Lord. Help, save, comfort, and defend us, gracious Lord.
The Lord be with you. Let us pray. O oh God, on this day, you once taught the hearts of your faithful people by sending them the light of your Holy Spirit. Grant us in our day, by the same Spirit, to have a right understanding in all things and evermore to rejoice in his holy consolation. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who liveth and reigneth with thee and the Holy Ghost, one God, now and forever. You may be seated. The Old Testament reading for the day of Pentecost is from Numbers, chapter 11. Moses went out and told the people the words of the Lord. And he gathered 70 men of the elders of the people and placed them around the tent. Then the Lord came down in a cloud and spoke to him and took some of the spirit that was on him and put it on the 70 elders. And as soon as the spirit rested on them, they prophesied, but they did not continue doing it. Now two men remained in the camp, one named Eldad and the other named Medad, and the spirit rested on them. They were among those registered, but they had not gone out to the tent. And so they prophesied in the camp, and a young man ran to Moses and told Moses, Eldad and Medad are prophesying in the camp. And Joshua, the son of Nun, the assistant of Moses, from his youth said, My Lord Moses stopped him. But Moses said to him, Are you jealous for my sake? Would that all the Lord's people were prophets, that the Lord would put his spirit on them. And Moses and the elders of Israel returned to the camp. This is the word of the Lord.
The second reading comes to us from the book of Acts, chapter 2. When the day of Pentecost arrived, they were all together in one place, and suddenly there came from heaven a sound like a mighty rushing wind, and it filled the entire house where they were sitting, and divided tongues of fire appeared to them and rested on each one of them, and they were all filled with the Holy Spirit and began to speak in other tongues as the Spirit gave them utterance. Now there were dwelling in Jerusalem Jews, devout men from every nation under heaven. And at that sa this sound, the multitude came together, and they were bewildered, because each one was hearing them speak in his own language. And they were amazed and astonished, saying, Are not all these who are speaking Galileans? And how is it that we hear each of us in our own native language? Parthians and Medes and Elamites and residents of Mesopotamia, Judea, Cappadocia, Pontus and Asia, Philigra and Pamphila, Egypt and the parts of Libya belonging to Cyrene, and visitors from Rome, both Jews and proselytes, Cretans and Arabians. We hear them telling in our own tongue the mighty works of God, and all were amazed and perplexed, saying, no, saying to one another, What does this mean? But others mocked and said, They are filled with new wine. But Peter, standing with the eleven, lifted, lifted up his voice and addressed them, Men of Judea and all who dwell in Jerusalem, let this be known to you and give ear to my words. For these men are not drunk, as you suppose, since it's only the third hour of the day. But this is what was uttered through the prophet Joel. And in the last days it shall be, God declares, that I will pour out my spirit on all flesh, and your sons and your daughters shall prophesy, your young men shall see visions, and your old men shall dream dreams. Even on my male servants and female servants, in those days I will pour out my spirit, and they shall prophesy. And I will show wonders in the heavens above and signs on the earth below, blood and fire and vapor of smoke. The sun shall be turned to darkness and the moon to blood before the day of the Lord comes, the great and magnificent day. And it shall come to pass that everyone who calls upon, of the calls upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. This is the word of the Lord. Let us stand in honor of the gospel. The Holy Gospel according to St. John, the seventh chapter. On the last day of the feast, the great day, Jesus stood up and cried out, If anyone thirst, let him come to me and drink. Whoever believes in me, as the scripture has said, out of his heart will flow rivers of living water. Now this he said about the Spirit, whom those who believed in him were to receive. For as yet the Spirit had not been given, because Jesus was not yet glorified. This is the Gospel of the Lord. You may be seated.
Grace, peace, and mercy be unto you from God, Father, Son, and Holy Ghost. Amen. Let us pray. Dear Heavenly Gracious Father, bless us and keep us according to your Holy Spirit, who has come to dwell not just here, but in us, that we may see and hear the work completed for us in Christ our Lord, and most of all, to have salvation and life with you forevermore. To this end, use the words that flow from these lips to proclaim your great mercy in Christ Jesus. Amen. Dear brothers and sisters in Christ, today is a celebration. Today is a feast. Today is the excitement of Pentecost. And it's kind of interesting because when we look at Pentecost, it's, oh yes, it's the coming of the Holy Spirit. And then it becomes the longest season of the church year. And it just keeps on going. We have the 27th uh, Sunday of Pentecost, and it just keeps on going. And, but we start off with the joy of what is given. It is God at work. It is God giving you himself so that you may know him. And it always sounds kind of goofy that God has to work to show us his gifts, and it is only through his work do we get to see, have, behold, and receive what he opens up to us. For we are deaf, dumb, and blind in all of the work that he does, and it is only through him are our eyes opened, our ears unplugged, our tongues loose to speak his word. And we have our Lord in our gospel lesson. On the last day of the feast, the great day, Jesus stood up and cried out, If anyone thirsts, let him come to me and drink. And we look at this, and how does this deal with Pentecost? Because Pentecost is laid out beautifully in the epistle lesson where we have the great mighty wind that the rest of Jerusalem hears. It is such a big event that all the visitors hear this and show up wondering what is happening. And they hear that the disciples, the apostles, they are the ones speaking in their foreign language, the languages of all the visitors. Something really big happened something that doesn't happen every day. It's the work of God. It is the giving of the Holy Spirit. It is the showing that God does not contain and hold and bind himself to a single place, but that his word truly goes out to the ends of the world so that all may believe. But then again, we go back to the gospel lesson, and we have Jesus in the temple and he has to raise his voice to be heard. And he challenges, makes the statement, if anyone thirsts, let him come to me and drink. I'm thirsty. I would love something to drink. But of course, our Lord is not just talking about simple earthly thirst, but it is a thirst of righteousness, a thirst of salvation, the thirst for life, true life. And only through the Holy Spirit do we get this. Do we understand how truly parched we are, truly dried up we are in this flesh, in this life. And no matter what we do to pour water or any other substance upon us, we are never satisfied. We no longer have the ability to do what needs to be done and our Lord opens himself up and says, those who thirst come and I will relieve you. I will give you my spirit. And this, our Lord connects us in and through the baptism, our baptism. For we have the living water that flows from Christ poured upon us. And then we hear that if we are in him, that that the flow, the, the river of the living waters will flow from us. Now that really gets scary. I'm fine with God doing all the work. 
I'm fine with God pronouncing the forgiveness of sins. I'm fine with the Holy Spirit moving, enlightening, opening, bringing you to hear the gospel. But then we hear that Jesus doesn't just show up, say your sins are forgiven, you have life everlasting, you will have, be in the glory of heaven forever, but he lays upon you the, that very life right here, right now, to be lived out. All the work of baptism is given to you. All the gifts of the very body and blood of Christ are given to you. The words of holy absolution, your sins are forgiven for his sake, are given to you so that you get to go out and show forth what has been done upon you that the living river, the living waters will flow through you, that you will be heirs, you will be the sons of God, you will be the children of the Most High. So the question is, and it's kind of scary, how do you show forth in your daily life that you are the children of God? How do you live so that others see that the river of life, Christ our Lord, flows through and out from you? This doesn't mean that you guys get up and leave and you now become preachers out on the road and grabbing anybody and telling them all the things that you know. These are the things of your life. How does your life evidence your faith? How do the things you say show that you are utterly dependent upon the work that has been given to you? How do the works of your hands show forth that you cling to the gifts that are outside of your ability to complete? Our Lord lays this out to you, but he doesn't say, I give you all this work and I hope you're able to do it. He sends forth his Holy Spirit. He sends forth the Comforter, the one who assures us that it has been done for us, the one who brings and carries us to the feet of Christ, who once again pronounces life, lifts us up, and carries us. And so that word comfort, it is not the comfort, oh, it's been done for us and we can live how we want. It is the comfort of knowing that we have the love of God. It is the comfort of knowing that we have the peace of God and not the wrath that we deserve. This comfort is knowing that we truly have a God who works for us. We have a God who works to us. And that is why this is truly a feast, a celebration. This is why we celebrate the work that took place, not just in Acts, where Christ is proclaimed and people of foreign tongue can hear and rejoice and be connected and unified in the body of Christ. But we celebrate that this still takes place here today. Now, you don't hear me speaking in a foreign language. You don't hear me trying to be something I'm not. But look at who and what we are. We go out into the world, and when we are dealing in the world, that truly is almost a foreign language compared to what is given here. For here we hear the word of God, which is elevated above all the other things that take place because it's the work of God. And so when we come from the world and we sit here, we hear the sweet language of God himself speaking through the Holy Spirit that all the work is done. The love of God is yours. Salvation has been given and completed. And we get to return to the foreignness of the corruption the fallenness, the pains, the hurts, the trials, tribulations. But we go with the comfort of knowing that God is our God, the one who keeps, the one who is steadfast in his love and his mercy. 
so that we get to face all things knowing that we are protected, held to life evermore. And that evermore is such a big word because it's not just forever. It is forevermore. It's eternity plus more because that is what has been given to you in and through the work of God and with him sending forth his Holy Spirit so that your heart may be broken. The stone, the deadness of our life is broken and shed in the gospel and that his life may be poured in and upon us so that we get to live connected to what has been given to us in the cross. For we have been pulled out of death and brought into the life of Christ. That's why we say in the confession that we live in the newness of life. And each Sunday, each day we receive and come together to hear this, the newness is restored. The newness is lived out in you. And that's exactly what we get to do. We get to go forth and live in the work of the Holy Spirit, pointing us and delivering us to Christ, who then delivers us to God, our Father. And we get to know that we have life, and life forevermore. This is yours in the faith created and sustained by God, Father, Son, and Holy Ghost. Amen. Let us stand and let us confess our faith as is found in the Nicene Creed. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty. Let us pray for the whole church of God in Christ Jesus and for all people according to their needs. Lord God, Heavenly Father, when you filled the disciples with the Holy Spirit, 3,000 souls were called, gathered, enlightened, and sanctified. Likewise, Please fill our congregation, our synod, and the whole church of Christ on earth with the Holy Spirit. Renew them that the sacraments may, may be administered faithfully and that many more would be called by the gospel, enlightened with your gifts, sanctified and kept in the true faith. Lord, in your mercy. Lord of all comfort and peace, give to the world that peace which only you can give. Deliver Christians from the hands of persecution. Restore peace to lands ravished by war and grant safety to refugees. Bring peace to our own nation in the face of political division and tension. 
let us find peace in you and your unchanging promises. Lord, in your mercy. Hear Almighty God, look with favor upon those who serve out their vocation in the armed forces. Protect them from all harm and danger as they serve to defend their neighbor. Keep them ever grounded in faith and in Christ's unfailing love. Lord, in your mercy. Gracious Father, you invite us to come to you as dear children approach their dear father. Give us childlike faith that we may approach your table with all boldness and confidence. Let us faithfully receive your son's body and blood with true repentance and contrition that the sacrament would fortify us to live in faith toward you and in fervent love toward one another. Lord, in your mercy. Yes. Merciful Lord, please look with compassion upon those who are sick, hurting, facing surgery, or simply downtrodden. We pray especially this day for Doris, Dana, Pat, Marie, Dorothy, Bob, Doris, Nancy. We also pray for Herbert, Tom, Dolores, Jeff, Elijah, Beulah, Marilyn, Norma, Gina, Joe, Barr. We continue to play, pray for Dennis, Tesla, Hal, Grace, Kathy, Larry, Dale, Buddy, Jeanette. Along with Diana, Dakota, Tom, Jim, Nancy, Chris, Harper, Norma, Charlene, Garrett, Gary, Elaine. We also pray for Kelly, Leona, Eloise, Peggy, Alfreda, Alicia, Margaret, Amy, Mike, Ron, Mona, Bill, Natalie, Clara, Craig, Steve, Dulcie, and Karen. We also continue to pray for the family and the congregation of Pastor Schultz. Visit them in their distress. Grant them relief from pain and let them ever fix their eyes on Jesus, the author and perfecter of life. Lord, in your mercy. Into your hands, O Lord, we commend all for whom we pray, trusting in your mercy through Jesus Christ, in your Son, our Lord, who liveth and reigneth with thee and the Holy Ghost, one God, now and forever. Amen. You may be seated as we continue with the offering.
our Father. We give thanks to you, almighty God, that you have refreshed us through this salutary gift, and we implore you that of your mercy, you would strengthen us through the same in faith toward you and in fervent love toward one another. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who liveth and reigneth with thee in the Holy Ghost, one God, now and forever. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious unto you. The Lord lift up his countenance upon you and give you peace.